How Great Is That Darkness? An article written by Jim Lucas and published in the Shield of Faith newsletter in September of 2003. The Apostle John says, This then is the message which we have heard of him, and we declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. 1 John 1, 5-7 he did not merely say, if we walk in the light, we have fellowship one with another. He said, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Do you ever stumble? I sure have. Jesus said that if a man walk in the night, he stumbles because there is no light in him. John 11:10. Jesus also said, take heed, therefore, that the light which is in you be not darkness. Luke 11:15. When light is directed straight into the eye, it hinders more than it helps. We are not able to see anything else. Many of us get taken up with certain truths. We are so busy looking at the trees, we fail to see the forest. Or we can only see the moat that is in our brother's eye and fail to see the beam that is in our own. The Pharisees had the most upright and conservative doctrine of their day. They took pride in being followers of Moses but they crucified the one of whom Moses testified. They had light, but their light blinded their eyes from seeing the Messiah. Some may say, how could they do such a thing? In all reality, if you or I had been there, we may have been no different. It is only by God's grace that anyone stands redeemed. The gospel is hid to them that are lost, for the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Notice he blinds the minds of those who believe not. Satan works in the world of unbelief. He appears as an angel of light who dwells in darkness. 2 Corinthians 11.14 Our unbelief gives him a place in our lives. He will bring some truth to our attention that obscures what God wants us to see. For example, some weary saint, struggling through a trying time, failing and feeling worthless, is told that he needs to do better, to be more holy, for God is holy, when what Jesus wants him to hear is that he is already accepted in the Beloved. There is only one that is holy, and that is the Holy One. If we, by faith, will abide in him, his holiness will be revealed in our lives by his grace that abounds for those who believe. We see that unbelief is also prevalent among the Lord's disciples. A man came to the disciples to have them cast a demon out of his son, but they could not. Jesus said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Then he healed the child. Peter had the faith to get out of the boat and walk on water, but when the winds came up and the wind blew, he lost faith. Jesus said to him, Thou of little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? Many of us who came out of the world to follow Jesus, when the waves of life and the winds of tribulation rage, take our eyes off him, and then the light that comes will deceive us. When we fail to keep our eyes on Jesus, we become concerned about self. We begin to look for position, recognition, or self-preservation, just like the disciples when there arose a reasoning among them, which of them should be greatest? When our eyes are not only for him, we think too much of ourselves. We may develop a sectarian spirit like John who said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followed not with us. Jesus said to him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. When our eyes are not only for Jesus, it is easy to be vindictive and intolerant for those who don't agree with us. We know not of what spirit we are, and forget that Jesus did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Read Luke 9:51 to 56 It is amazing how a saint one minute can receive a great revelation of God, and the next minute walk in darkness and become an instrument of the prince of darkness. For example, Peter had a tremendous revelation of God concerning who Christ was. 
Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. This was not revealed unto him by flesh and blood, but by our Father in heaven. Then Jesus began to explain to his disciples how he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things. Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Peter is standing against the Lord, even rebuking him. His flesh is at enmity with God. He is the savoring the things of man, not of God. Matthew 16, 15 to 23. He was being used of the enemy to discourage Jesus from fulfilling his mission. One moment basking in the revelation of God, the next blinded by the wisdom of this world. Perhaps he thought he was noble in his endeavor to spare Christ from suffering. Peter did not understand the wisdom of God, and Jesus, speaking of the cross, was foolishness to him. See 1 Corinthians 1.18. Peter at this time was still a very carnal believer. He lacked in the humility and brokenness that was to come. After his boasting that he would never deny Jesus, the night that Jesus was arrested, he denied him three times, then went out and wept bitterly. Jesus explained how it is that we are capable of such actions. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is single, the whole body is full of light. But when your eye is evil, the body is full of darkness. How great is that darkness? Matthew 6, 22 to 23. The darkness is so great that one is capable of doing evil, believing that all is well. The eye is directed by the heart, see Proverbs 4, 20-23. When the eye is single, we abound in light and grace, but when the eye is evil, or not single, we abide in darkness. Jesus said, No man putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Remember Lot's wife. We may, like Peter, stumble around for a time in darkness. But we must eventually come to brokenness and true repentance of heart. Then we only have eyes for our precious Lord Jesus, the fairest of ten thousand, and the lily of the valley. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in you is not darkness. If the whole body therefore is full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light as when a bright shining of a candle does give thee light. Luke 11, 35 and 36. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. 1 John 1, 7. Pride and other distractions bring darkness, a very great darkness. But in Jesus we have grace to abide in the light. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. We receive Jesus and his great salvation by faith. Let us continue in faith and we will abide in him in whom is no darkness at all.